explain there. This uh, auto loading, double action, Same center fire. fire. Center fire pistol, because I'm not familiar with firearms. My Lord, when we refer to a center fire, we are referring to a firearm that has this, the, the firing pin yes. that strikes in the center of your cartridge case, oh, okay. on the primer of it. Oh, okay. And when you're referring to a semi-automatic, semi-automatic is a firearm that for every shot you fire, you have to pull the trigger. So in case of a pistol, what you do is you cock the firearm, you pull the trigger, it fires a shot, that's the, the, the slight cycles, it loads, it ejects the fire cartridge case, it loads another firearm. You must release the trigger and pull it again. It becomes a semi-automatic. Where when you are referring to a full automatic, in full automatic, you just pull the trigger once, it continues shooting until you release that trigger. And you have also re referred to pattern, ma pattern matching. What is pattern matching? The pattern matching in terms of the theory of identification. It's, you look at the pattern marks that are transferred to a firearm. You have different patterns. It depends on what type of a mark is it. Yes. In, with a bullet, on, on bullet mostly, we look at the striations because your bullet passes through the barrel of the firearm. In case of a pattern, it's when your, the imperfection is on your bridge face or maybe the shape of your, your, your firing pin has got a specific pattern that will always be transferred to all the exhibits, cartridge cases, which were fired in that farm. Master School Mangayo, a petted match, we are going to get in a salila, no matter you are picking up a mask, no matter what is in the master sheet, no matter what, as those salila, no matter you are in town, no matter you are in Cobolon, no matter a business with a cartridge, oh, Mangabe, put to you. And there is also what is called, and I believe that is the method that you applied in examining, comparing, and coming to the conclusions with regard to the exhibit bullet in this case, that which is said to be consecutive matching striations, or consecutive the CMS. matching striations, yes. So we'll call it CMS from here. Do you know about it? That's correct, Maro. Yes. And for us also that are not politically learned, please explain what CMS means and how does it operate when you do the comparison. My Lord, the CMS, as I've explained, are the consecutive matching striers which are created by the barrel of firearm as your bullet passes through <coughs> the firearm. When you do your comparison microscope, when using the 3D, yes. you are expecting at least to say that there's sufficient agreement of marks on your bullet. It's when you see six matching striations or maybe a set of three matching striers, two sets of three matching striers on your bullet, and they must be relatively on the same positions. Lana, must put my eye over CMS. I love Upega for Nagi, I'm a max at his age. A Sugabionagi in town is farm, a Kumela Gionagi in town. You see your family open a master, a mabi league, a matatu, a Ugo Shore, when I put it up on your one leg, Ugo Tigi, Yabo Nati in Toledo. And those triations that we are looking for for identification are contained within a specific group of the projectile, is that correct? Within a specific meaning, mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying they must be in the same relative position. position. Okay. Okay. And then you, you've said that uh, you are looking for a set of six matching strikes in the same relative position or a set of two by three consecutive matching striations uh, within the same relative position. It can be six matching stri on one groove, and it yes. can have three matching stri set of two, three matching striations on different uh, grooves, but they must be on the same relative same position. Like if you have groove one that has 
at least three matching strands. And on the other groove, let's say groove three, there's another three matching strands. On both items, they must be on the same grooves. It must be groove one and groove three. So those are what we call the same relative positions. Now, is there a standard that uh, six matching striya? Uh, the standard that is used, they must be consecutive without a break. So when you come them on the exhibit bullet, on the test bullet, it's what we call the railway tracks. They must align with each other. They must match this side and that side, and they must be of the same, as you said, uh, with uh, peaks, ridges, furrows, and the like. Is that, is, is that my understanding of how you apply this theory? When you say they must be on the same groove. No, no, I, I say the consecutive. Say, for example, you're talking about the six matching striations. That will be, we are looking for six on the exhibit bullet, matching the six on the test bullet to come to our conclusion that this exhibit bullet was fired on this exhibit firearm, right? Malot, when you align them on yes. your microscope, when yes. you see both of them, yes. the striations must align. Yes. If it's six matching strides, they must align. All six of them must align. Even if there might be spacing, the spacing on the left must be equal to the spacing on the right. And if there's a gap, you count your, line, your striation lines. If there are six, it's enough to make it positive. Lana ge uma utata nisa no mage futi usuling anisa go pega fanele uguti ge uguling an no ma futi kubesenda weni e yota no guti uma ge kuno kulega no mage ma kepsa kona ge kota uma uwa bala utole uguti ge au six no gubukela uguti ge anele. I think, Captain, we're gonna be confused. Let me continue with this, and when we come to your charts, we'll ask them to be beamed here, and we'll look at your results. On the aspect where you said, I found six, we will do the, that exercise. On the other one where you said, I found five, we'll do the same exercise, count them in court, so that everybody's on the same page and we understand what you are talking about. And similarly, on the two, you'll say, on this one where I found two, it's this one and this one. And then we can understand how this CMS really should be applied. So let me continue with my, my, my cross-examination. Now, back to the terms that, the terminology that you also use. When you examine a bullet, sometimes there are what are called skid marks or slippage marks. What is a skid mark and what is a slippage mark? When a shot is fired and your bullet is inside the chain, it's in the cartridge inside the chain, a shot is fired, the minute your bullet leaves the chamber, it gets into the barrel of the firearm. There's, when you speak of slippage, your bullet, it slips into, it doesn't go into the, 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 the not the chamber, into the barrel straight. It slips before it gets into the chamber, into the chamber, I mean, into the barrel. So you will have the skid mark, the skid marks when it slips, or the, 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 the slippage before it gets into the, the, the chamber uh, into the barrel. Yes. So those marks will be different, will create some other markings that are it's difficult sometimes to match the skid marks or the, 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 the slippage markings on your exhibits. Because you can see old firearms when you shot, instead of getting into the, 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 the barrel, they slip a little bit and then they, because what you're looking at the barrel is, normally the barrel is a little bit bigger in diameter than your bullet. Mm -hmm. So when it leaves the chamber, after a shot is fired, mm. it slips and then it gets into the chamber. Because the barrel is a little bit bigger, the barrel will grip it so that it can go through all the, 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 the grooves. So the slippage is when it leaves the, barrel, the, the chamber and getting into the barrel. 
Lama Maxi on goes and our Namaga Okumanga Woge, a slip page in a mascot max, a scatty gala conage, a Uma Usutubulage, Bessel Gutimanjege, E. in town, Lena in a paradigm of Colon, Isia Pumagonage, a chamber, Ia Manjig, Lana Pambi, Sonis Pam, Logo Bizon, who take a chamber, Ilaoma Max, a Kulmanga. And how does the slip page or the skit mark affect the carrying of the marks onto a bullet? Onto the bullet? Yes. It can create markings which are different from the... And those markings, it's, as I said, it's difficult because your, your slip page will not happen exactly the same way. Yes. So it will change. It will create the markings which will sometimes be impossible to match with the firearm, but you will see that there's a slippage on this bullet. Ama Max, we allow as the sugar get we are more good to get when they get an janig. Now, when I get Ama Max, as the sugar get a busona is found. So, in other words, the slippage or the skid mark will create inconsistent <coughs> markings. The, the markings won't be the same uh, on a particular bullet to bullet. That's why I said it's difficult to can match the slippage markings. Those markings, it's difficult to can match them and say that they. They were fighting the same fire. In our Mushilo, we would love my mats, love Abyss and Utica, Masli Page, Gunzi Mag, Ubuti, Wakatanise, Utica, Sergeants, the Swiss Farmers Tees. And what we must understand is not all the firearms will have the slip page. Yes. It will depend on the firearm. If the firearm has been misused or it's been used many times and it's starting to worn out, that's where you will find mostly the slip page on the firearm. But the new firearms, it's hard, you will hardly find. The slip is on there. A footy game, go over to the logo, who's on a zone, a palm, we are going to get his palm, Sergeant Ziswa, Kanja, and the footy game, Nagan, Nagan, what a if I miss it, I'm going to go to the logo, I'm going to go to the logo, I'm going to go to the logo. Sorry, don't you, don't ballistics refer to that slippage as you are trying to explain to us? That language, they use the language indeterminate. Have you ever heard of it? Well, indeterminate is when yes. you do your comparison, you can see the Martin, but they're That's not it. enough, sufficient enough That's to it. can say they're, they're fighting the same firearm. With the slippage, you can see the slippage markings, but those markings also, you cannot determine whether. So we make it inconclusive if you have only the slippage, you don't have proper markings. You can make it inconclusive also, or uh, indeterminate. Sorry, I've got to understand this. When you say inconclusive, what do you actually mean? Inconclusive means that you have, you can have positive inconclusive or negative inconclusive. Right. When it's positive inconclusive, you have markings, uh, similar markings, of, but are not sufficient enough to can say that it's basically this, exactly this firearm that has fired. So because of your markings are not sufficient enough, you can just say that it's inconclusive, meaning you cannot determine that this bullet was fired in this firearm. Irrespective of the other characteristics contained in the bullet. With the class characteristics, yeah, you can it. see the class characteristics. That's it. The class characteristics, let's say it's all the C's that 75 will have six yeah, right twisted yeah. uh, right cartridges. Yeah. Those are the class characteristics. Yes. So you cannot make a bullet positive on class characteristics. Okay. You need to look at the individual markings, right. which are made by the firearm also. So you can say that the class characteristics matches the, based on the class characteristics, only class characteristics, but there's no in individual markings, so they are, not, they are not sufficient enough. You can just say that it's inconclusive. You cannot conclude by saying this is the right firearm that was used. Let me just jump on to that one before I go to the next aspect. This aspect of inconclusive finding. In simple terms, when an examiner says, I have examined, we are talking about our case here, I've examined the exhibit bullet 
and I examined the firearm that was handed to me as having emanated from one of the accused persons in this case. Having examined that firearm, I come to the conclusion that it is inconclusive. In other words, you are saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, I cannot say for sure either way that this is the firearm that shot this particular bullet or this is not the firearm that shot that particular bullet. Are we, are we on the same terms there? It depends on your conclusion. You can say it's positive inconclusive. I can see the similarities, yes. but they're not sufficient enough. Yes. So that will make it inconclusive or positive inconclusive. And you can say that I can see the class characteristics, the, 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 the grooves, diameter of the grooves are the same. The number of your twisting uh, grooves are the same. The width are the same, but I cannot see any similarities here. Then you can make it negative in conclusion because there's nothing that matches. Let me give you three examples, all of them inconclusive. When there's a, some agreement of the individual characteristics and an agreement of all the class characteristics, is that an inconclusive uh, finding? When you have some agreement of individual characteristics yes. and all class characteristics agree. Then you can say it's, it can be a positive inconclusive. OK. The second one, when we've got an agreement again of all the class uh, 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 characteristics, but there's a disagreement of individual characteristics because you could not reproduce what you want to see, the striations uh, consistently. So because of lack of repeatability or reproducibility, you say it's inconclusive. Do we are, are we on the same term? When you say you can see the class characteristics. The class characteristics, <coughs> but because on the exhibit bullet or exhibit casing, you cannot, because of, you cannot produce the same marks that you want to see on the exhibit bullet. They cannot be reproduced. You can make it inconclusive also there. Okay. Now that I get Uma Ugutige, no Gunamaka characteristics, the Maguno Gutizege, a Obona Yoga, Gota, Loko, Aguanele, Nago, Mashoga, Ugutika, Lana is still several as you. All right. Now let us talk a bit about this case, uh, 636 of 10, 2014, the one that you started working on on the 27th of October 2014. Your testimony is that you were called by uh, Captain Bentley for assistance at 13511 Kutlanu section, Zamo section, uh, first arrest where a prominent goalkeeper by the name of Mr. Robert Senzo Meiwa was shot. Correct? That's correct, man. Yeah, but before that, I'm going to go to the next slide. October 2014. And your, and your further testimony is that you attended the scene with uh, Warrant Offi Officer uh, Ntini and Lieutenant Colonel Makati. Is that correct? Uh, I think Makadi was also a warrant officer or captain. Oh, can't okay. call. And these were these officers were from the same office as you, from the Silverton offices. Of That's the correct, Malo. Okay. And Mr. Gomez has asked you this, but I'm going to ask you again: What were their specific roles, uh, Makati and Intini, those officers, uh, at the scene? in assisting you? Malo, they were there to assist me with anything that I 
if I need assistance, maybe to take measurement, to, or if I need anything, I would ask them to assist me so when I was busy uh, analyzing the scene. And regarding their assistance, do you know if both of them made statements or made entries in their, if they were warrant officers, do they obviously have diaries? Uh, do you know if they made any entries regarding their involvement at the scene? Any entries in their diaries? In their diaries or uh, written statements, whatever notation, recorder that they made. My Lord, if I take my colleagues with me to assist me in the crime scene, I'm the one who's doing the reconstruction or the examination. I'm the one who's going to submit the statement. Okay. They don't submit the statement right. because they're only there to assist me. And you arrive at the scene, you find Captain Bentley together with a myriad of other police officers. Did you there and then speak to Captain Bentley or you just announced your arrival to him and then you waited to the side? Well, as I said, they were busy processing the crime scene when I arrived. I only informed him that they, I'm here, I've already arrived, but they can finish, finish, uh, finish first with their processing and then I'll and normally I know that with LCRC that when they come and they are the second responders, the first responders were uniformed officers. One of the uniformed officers will take the LCRC officer through a walkthrough of the scene before processing. Did anyone take you through the whole tree of the scene? Either Captain Bentley or here, Bentley refers to Masumbuka, who took you through the scene. But I can't recall who took me through the scene, because as I said, before I entered this, when I was on the door, they told me that they have two shots fired, and then, but they cannot locate the other bullet hole or bullet damage. Yes. Then where I was standing, I could see that mark on the tire. I pointed at them as, there's another bullet mark that we are looking for. Okay. And at any stage or at some stage before you conducted your trajectory, examination, your crime scene reconstruction, did Cap uh, Captain Bentley brief you now about what had transpired there? What I knew was that there was a shooting and then the deceased was shot inside the house. The shooting occurred in the house and those are the only marks that we found. But who told you that? Was it Captain Bentley? Malot, I cannot recall whether it was him or somebody who was with him, because he was there as to oversee the this crime scene management team that was on the scene. Okay. And if Captain Bentley would be called to this court and say he's, he personally briefed you, you wouldn't dispute that, correct? I wouldn't dispute that. Okay. Okay. Malot, I request clarity. When they say briefed you, brief about what? About the scene, what had transpired and what you are required to assist them with. <laughs> he couldn't even see whether there was a second bullet, Brentley. He had to tell him that there's a second bullet there on the floor. I'm just mentioning it. That Brentley is a lay person as far as ballistics are concerned. From what he says, he's on the scene. He says he knows that there are, he's told that there were two bullets fired, but he can't find the second bullet where it was fired. And here comes there, stands, and says, oh, this is where the second bullet was fired at. 
Am I correctly interpreting? That's correct, man. Okay. And you were informed because the court now talks about uh, you were not you were told they can't find the second bullet. Uh, so we are talking about sequence of bullets. Were you told that another bullet was already found? Not the bullet, the impact, the, the bullet damage on the floor. You saw the, the bullet, bullet fragment was yes. found, and the other bullet was found, but they could only find the one bullet damage on the door. Okay. But that one on the tile, they couldn't find it. They, or they were not aware that it's a bullet bump. I okay. okay. And after the processing of the scene by Musia, uh, Sergeant Musia and Warrant Officer Mutatu, uh, were you shown the exhibits, especially let me be frank and brutal, the forensic, uh, the, 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 the ballistic evidence that they collected? On the scene. Did yes, they I saw it on the scene. Okay. Yeah, but okay. I'm not going to go to the museum and get any of the stuff. Okay, but since they're going to go, yeah, but I'm not going to go to the museum. I'm not going to go to the museum. I'm not going to go to the museum. And then, upon they are finishing, and when I say they are not at all, uh, museum and others who were processing the scene, then you take over. You do your scene reconstruction, your trajectory reconstruction. What I did there only took, took measurements of, I took photos of the position of the yes. bullet mark and the bullet damage on the door, and I took the measurement. There was not much to do on the scene. Okay. Uh, 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 okay or pro fired projectile, casing, whatever related to ballistics on the 27th of October uh, at the scene? Well, Did the, you find and remove? Well, the bullet fragment that was there and the bullet that was there were already collected by Warrant Officer Mutlatra and Musia. They were already in the seal bag. And those are the only exhibits which were at the scene. When you search the scene, you couldn't find anything else. In some book, a canyon, a yag, in some when I go with an attack, a lemeleg, Babesebe, Tolileg, a footy, Fagueg, a discrama says of Farazig, a book of Unig, or what to love, no more beggar get on a lap. Yeah, but the question that I'm asking is that you personally did not remove any ballistic evidence on the 27th that you took away from the scene. No, no. Minage, a book of your fathers of Patelin and Azoga Ipa, no matter in Tambo. And then on the 28th of October 2014, you, together with uh, Warrant Officer Mutlatu, attend the post-mortem at the Jimmy Stein Pathology Center. Is that correct? That's correct, Malo. Uh, we saw the 28th is October 2014, Minage Ganyina Yege, Oyo Warrant Officer Mutlatu, Sasasiya Gema Kazeni, at Jimmy Stein. And the examinations that you conducted there, uh, or, or your participation there, is captured in paragraph 9 to 11 of your exhibit X13 capital A, or X13A, uh, which is the first affidavit of 22 pages. But we are not going to go there, because uh, it, 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 it's not pertinent for my cross-examination. I'm just putting to you that you conducted certain duties uh, at the post-mortem as well. That's correct, my lord. Yes. Yeah, but we're going to support the case again. I'm going to get the lab and I'm going to get the 28th October 2014 for the Macazine HMSD. Now, just before I, I move on again, let's return back to the issue of Captain Bentley. Your, your testimony is that you were told that two firearms, I mean, two shots were fired inside the kitchen. Were you also told about a third bullet that was shot by Kitten Bentley. A third bullet fired yes. by 
No, I don't know anything about it. Okay. My Lord, I've got the statement of Captain Allen Mark Bentley commissioned on the 3rd of December 2014. The commissioner is... They've helped me out. Uh, B.G. Jones. Uh, it's A82 uh, of Fosnora 636-10-2014. And then the CSI CR number is 143-2014. Uh, I'd like just to read this statement on record. Uh, 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 Lieutenant Colonel, do you have the statement of, of Captain no. Bentley? No, I don't have that statement. Okay, I'll ask uh, Sergeant Mohola to assist us. Uh, we'll revert to this point once we find that statement, because I don't have a copy there of here. I've only got my copy. My Lord, would it be proper for me? Let me get the court's direction. If I read the statement on record, then when we find, we'll refer the captain yeah. to it. Okay. I mean, you're going to hand it up anyway. Yes. So you can read whatever you want to put to okay. this witness, if you say it. Okay, thank you, my Lord. I'm indebted. The statement reads as follows. Uh, Alan Mark Bentley states under oath in English, I'm a captain in the South African Police Service stationed at the Houting CR and CSM CS CSI team, Johannesburg Central, with telephone number that I'm not going to read on record. On, the 20, on 2014, 1027, at 8, I was requested to attend to a murder scene at 13511 <coughs> Street, Fosloras. I was informed that the deceased was a well-known soccer player, Senzo Meiwe. On the above-mentioned date, at approximately 9.10, which is in the morning, the CSI team arrived at the scene and were received by the duty officer of Springs LCRC, Captain Masombuka. During a short briefing between Captain Masombuka, Constable Musia, and the Houteng CSI team, it was confirmed that the shooting incident happened on the previous night, the 26th of October 2014, at 2000 hours. Our, it was also established that Lieutenant Matebula and Constable Musia of Springs LCRC had started processing the scene and had collected certain exhibits. The allegations, as indicated by Captain Masombuka during the briefing, was that unknown men entered the premises and demanded money and cell phones. There was an altercation between the robbers and the deceased in the kitchen of the premises, and three shots were allegedly fired. It is alleged that two shots were fired inside the kitchen and the other one was, and the other one as the suspects were fleeing. The deceased stumbled to the lounge area and fell. He was then rushed to hospital where he died. A decision was taken during the briefing or to investigate the scene as if no investigation was done. During the first walkthrough of the scene, Captain Masombuka indicated the place on the kitchen floor where a bullet point was discovered and collected by Constable Musia. He further also indicated to me a bullet hole on the inside of the kitchen door. During the walkthrough, another bullet point was discovered on the countertop in the kitchen behind the containers in close proximity to the bullet hole in the door. I contacted Captain Mangena telephonically and informed him that he was needed we needed his assistance on the crime scene. Warrant officer T. Tim Clatter from the Houghton CSI was identified as the member responsible for processing of the scene. The CSI team then proceeded to process the scene, assisting Warrant Officer Motlato with the identification, collection, and documentation of potential evidence. 
On arrival of the ballistic team, Captain Mangena was briefed by myself. His team then proceeded to examine the, the, the scene. He also indicated to me that he would be attending the post-mortem of the deceased. I undertook to indicate place, date, and time to him. A decision was also made that Warren Officer Mutlatlofot of the Houghton CSI and Constable Musia of Springs LCRC would attend the post-mortem of the deceased on the 28th of October 2014 for the purpose of documentation which included photography and collection of ed 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 additional evidence. It is shown and attested to, like I said, on the 3rd of December 2014 and the Commissioner of Oaths is uh, B.G. Jones. Now, what I was putting to you, and you've also correctly said that your observation is that, and, and, and the physical evidence points you to two bullets inside the kitchen, and then uh, you didn't see anything that indicates that there was a third bullet fired in that vicinity of the kitchen, correct? That's correct. Now, according to the statement that I've just read of Captain Bentley, a third shot was allegedly fired, so we are not sure whether, according to this statement, whether it was inside the house or outside the house, because it says one shot was fired as the suspects were fleeing, right? That's correct. Uh, yeah, we are sure that we are sure that we are sure that we are sure we are sure that 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 we And these statements seem to agree with the evidence that was led by Ms. Zandile Kumalo in this court, who said when they were in the kitchen, as the altercation is going on, or the struggle is going on between the intruders and the people th that were in the house, a first shot went off, hit the tile floor, and then one of the shrapnel or a, frag a piece of fragment hit her ankle. And she then ran to the bathroom where she went to hide herself. Whilst in the bathroom, she heard a second shot, which was louder, as, like uh, the first one, and then later on, or immediately, I don't know the sequence, she then heard a third shot, which was a bit duller in sound. <coughs> so she, she, she heard three shots, and Bentley also talks about three shots, but we don't know where the, th the third shot was fired. That's correct, Malo. That's what this statement is saying. Okay, thank you. Lana ke manje logo esikfundi lege noma enge kfundi lege lana kuya hambe tsa na ke na logo ogu shiwa uye na ke o noma ogu shiwa uye no zandi le kumalo kate etulu faga zige ba ke la inkanto lo ogu tige sa kuma ge ogu kadi spam ila esa shaya panzi ge wase ya shaya ge na ye wase ya balega ge e ya kona ge efatum sa pinda ge futi sa sa kuma ge ogu ishanda lesbili. And Malo, this statement is clear on paragraph, this paragraph, where it says it is alleged that two shots were fired inside the kitchen yes. and the other one as the suspects were fleeing. So inside the house, it's clear it says two shots were fired inside the house. Eh, footy ke kutla tole ke lana ngoben de la ke ukbalo ngai ukule si statement de uguti ke baya show ke uguti ke ispa musaku ma amasanta amabili na pagati ekishin eso tu ake ngalengati sebebale. Yes. Now earlier on, I asked you if you personally had removed any piece of exhibit and or projectile cartridge casing anything ballistically related, and you were adamant that you did not, correct? That's correct, Malone. And the buzzing of the family, the way Nagy, who called the union over Susan, the Mao Tatag, or good Fagazi, or Pendulagi, or Tata, Yabu Consolo. My Lord, with leave of the court, I, I'd like to refer 
Lieutenant Mangena to another statement, which is A6 of Fosula Rask has 636 of 10, 2014, which is the statement of AB Sifularo Montuedi. It was commissioned on the 24th of November 07 at 12, and the commissioning officer is Siboni Sibonelo Mkize, the first Loras officer, detective sergeant. With leave of the court again, my lord, let me do the exercise so that we don't yes, yes. waste the court's time by reading the contents of the statement. It reads at paragraph one. I, ABC Fularo Montuedi State, I under oath in English, paragraph two, I am a warrant officer, service number that I'm not going to read on record, stationed at Provincial Investigation Unit, cell number I'm not going to place on record. Paragraph three, on the 24th of 10, 27, 27 at nine, I, uh, I visited the scene of crime uh, home, home number 13511, for Slorus, my lord, the handwriting is a doctor's handwriting, so I'm going to struggle. Uh, four, the incident of the shooting happened on the 24-10-26, but I visited the scene on the 24-10-27 at 9. When I arrived at the scene, uh, was uh, ballistic expert Captain Mangena of... Uh, Oh, oh, and a photographer, warrant officer Mutlato, who took uh, uh, some photos. Captain Mangena took exhibit of spent cartridge that was found on the door frame. No one tampered with the scene while, whilst I was on the scene. Photos and exhibits were taken in, in my presence. Uh, sorry, what? sorry. I just, he says he took an exhibit. Yeah, he says, uh, let me read. What is an exhibit? He what says, is, sorry, my lord. And a door frame. He says, let me read again, my lord. He says, Captain Mangana took exhibit of a spent cartridge and that was frame. on the door frame. Yeah, okay. And then he says, paragraph is the attestation. I know the contents, and like I said, it's properly commissioned as well. Did you, do you know who this person is? Uh, I don't know that. In Gabo, we are Mazi in the Muntulona, in Funda, I start myself, Sifularo, Utrage, and Mazlo, Muntuloyo, Ufunda Galapa, in the Namagre Statement, we are sure Ubuti, who kept it, but so kept it in the Mangan, and also started, Watatage, Eco Bolondo, Eli Seven Zil, and Maga, SL Surgeons, you see, were called a lap in the rest of men. Yes, but you see, according to this evidence, I mean, so sorry, it's not evidence. According to this statement, he says, you took a spent cartridge that was, uh, Mangana took an exhibit of, of spent cartridge that was found on the door frame. On which date, my lord? The 27th of October. He says, I visited the scene on the 27th of November at 9 a.m. November. November. Oh, so sorry, the 27th of, uh, of October, the following day, after the day when you, you were also... When I was the there, the scene? Yes. <laughs> My Lord, as I have mentioned, we don't collect exhibits from the crime scene. Uh, but you took it from the door frame. I don't know any exhibit <laughs> like that. Uh, in, in other words, as I understand, understand it, it, sorry, sorry, as I understand it, that bullet didn't pierce. When I looked at the photos, it appears as if when you were giving evidence, and the reconstruction that it went askance, mm. pierced the door frame. That's correct. Ricocheted because the energy was diminishing. It was tumbling. Mm. And actually, it did the door, not the door frame. That's it, yeah. yeah but, but apparently, it was, it was there, like a, a pitch on a tree. Yes. Just <clears throat> yes. That's according to this yeah. statement. So. You said you don't agree with this. I don't agree with and, it because, my lord, I've mentioned it. When I go to a crime scene, LCRC is there, crime scene management there. It's their mandate to collect all the exhibits from the crime scene. Okay. I don't collect exhibits. Why will I collect that one and leave the other exhibits? 
Yeah, but what Montwedi says, he'll answer for himself that question. I'm not going to answer that. But he says this exhibit was taken in his presence and he's a warrant officer at the provincial investigation unit. Why would he make that allegation? I don't know, and it's for the first time I hear that, Malo. <clears throat> now, the projectiles that were found on the scene, that is the, the disintegrated one, the damaged one, and the one that was not completely damaged. You say they were FMJ bullets, I'm sorry, CMJ bullets, correct? That's correct, my lord. Now for me, CMJ, FMJ is gobbledygook. It's Chinese to me. Explain the differences and the makings the composition of each of those bullets. What is FMJ? How is it composed? How it's, is it its firing power? As I'm, I'm not sure what those mean. Now, when you look at the FMJ, it's a full metal jacket. It's, these bullets are normally what the police are using on their firearms. They are using full metal jacket manufactured by PMP. It's a lead covered by a strong uh, copper, but it's open at the back. And if you look at the, 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 the CMJ, the CMJ is a soft lead covered by a very thin layer of copper <coughs> and it's completely covered. Yes. Uh, FMJ, uh, PMP, uh, and basically the CMJ, it's a cheap bullet and it's very soft, it breaks easily compared to the FMJ. FMJ is a strong bullet. And for the fragmented or the damaged one, uh, I, I'm just asking it for my clarification in the back of my mind. How did you determine that that was also a CMJ? I looked at the jacket of the copper jacket of it. It's a thin copper jacket of it. And it's more of a lead than Okay, now let's talk to, and I'm going to refer you now to this, to your uh, exhibits. Let me refer you to exhibit uh, X13B, that will be your second affidavit. I believe, just in summary, because I don't want to belabor the points that are, are not necessary for my cross-examination, but for record purposes, I must place them on record as well in my cross-examination. That one, if I'm correct, uh, do you have it, uh, Kenel Mangena? Uh, Exhibit X13B, your second affidavit, I believe is the one that deals with the Barretta that was a non-match. Is that the one? Yeah, I, I have it, but it's page missing on the tongue. Let me check. Yeah, I have it there with me. Do you have it? I believe you said the firearm concerned was a 9 millimeter parabellum Barretta model FS.
Are, are your, your, your documents marked as per uh, in, in alliance with the markings here in court, Captain, or is that your file? Because if you are looking at your file and it's not marked, it's going to confuse you. The, it's, it's the second affidavit. I think it was deposed. Yeah, that's good. Let me see five. Sorry, my lord. Uh, I think he's, he's missing a page. Sorry. Yeah, I've been assisted. Paragraph three. It's on paragraph three. Okay. That, that's the one that refers to them. I, I don't want us to go verbatim with the contents. They are already on record. I just want to sum up and move on to another aspect. Is that the one that deals with the Barretta? The one that Mr. Gomez was cross examining you about that it belonged to Mr. Twala? Is that the one? No, it's not this one. It's not this one. It's a five-page affidavit, uh, uh, Colonel Mangena. And you, you are correct. It starts on, uh, on, on paragraph three, where you say, on the 13th of November, during the performance of my official duties, I received two sealed evidence bags. And you, you, know, you mentioned the, the bag numbers from the ballistic administration system. Uh, case, the system and then 3.1 is one nine millimeter parabellum uh, P. Beretta model 92FS. The date? Okay. It says uh, paragraph 3 thereof uh, yeah. at page 3 of 5. 13th November. On the 13th of November, yes. Yes, I have this one. Yes, thank you. Now, you've testified that you, you were given this firearm to compare uh, or for elimination purposes, correct? That's correct. And then your findings was that that firearm did not fire our and when I say our, I mean the exhibit bullet in this case, correct? That's correct, Malo. Yeah, bong shilo go uting a tola go to the spam, agu so nage, esa to bulage, le tambu, eya tola galage, le kunya na yuklona le tab. And when you, you make an, a finding of elimination, do you also have to have that peer reviewed by somebody else, one of your colleagues or from outside who is in ballistics? to confirm or differ with your findings? Was it peer-reviewed, that finding? That's correct, Malo. Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to belabor on that firearm because it was a non-match. Now, your further testimony is that you are then called by Colonel Gininda. Uh, for the purpose of this cross, I'll say Colonel Gininda because he was still a colonel back then, uh, to do certain, first he calls you and says, uh, can you perhaps determine by measuring the height of certain persons of suspect, uh, of, of interest for me to determine whether or not they could possibly be the shooter in this first Loras 63610 of 2014 case, correct? 
That's correct, my lord. Eh, go far as Bami, go to Yabong, I say, and the Shiloh, and we are not okay, or you can never get a little scat, who can in the Woody Games or Pegag and the Mangala, and the Batino Pegag, who would go wrong about Bona Yeni about to Bula. Colonel, for me, what is intriguing is this. In other cases, and you've done thousands of cases, I'm not going to doubt your expertise. I'm not here to do that. You've done thousands of examinations, bullets, firearms, tools, whatever. Do you normally do this exercise of measuring people's heights and whatever, unless in exceptional circumstances where some person was on a stamp? So it makes sense that because he's wearing prosthesis, you can measure him to determine where he was shooting. But in ordinary cases, like this case, do you normally go and measure people at police stations, their, their, their heights and whatever uh, things you need to do? My Lord, it depends on the investigating officer. What does he want to, to assist with? Yes. If he wants to assist with the height, we'll do that. Yes. And if the, uh, uh, the allegations that he's having needs something like a proof whether this, the height of this person can it be consistent. We have instances where maybe somebody sustained a gunshot wound where you have to, 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 to relate it with maybe a bullet hole or something. You have to get the measurements. We do that if the, uh, the I.O. Request us to do that. Sir Gonza, a local go to go Kale, you peg, or Mutu, you go to Magana, you go pebble, go to go Vienna, no, my born, I in about to Bula, Kuya go to get lower, Opena, Italage, Ini, Ifuna, Yoga, no Magam Sambi, in solo, Anazo, Zitinig, Opega, Lok, Omago, go to get Loga, Kalayo, Yabo Sir Gonza. If I understood one of your answers from the cross examination of Mr. Gomezulu yesterday was when he was asking you about the ownership of this firearm the Beretta that I've just said, I touch on and I leave. When he was asking you about the ownership, your answer was that you don't deal with ownerships and the like. You only deal with politic evidence, right? That's correct, man. Oh, you can you so? Umang Buzo, you and I go, Mr. Gomez, you saw the end Buzo again, or Nigas, you go, this is from Shiro Matigate, who go to Nigas, you buy the logo and seven and half of what I mean, I get, who fathers, you get egg family and give toy. And similarly for me, my impression, and I'm saying my impression, was that you as a ballistic expert, you are insulated from the nitty gritties of the case and the investigation so that you can remain partial in doing your examinations. In other words, you are insulated from the day-to-day -day, uh, other investigation of the case. All that you need to do is either uh, ballistic evidence is brought and allocated to you at FSL and then you do the examination but the rest of you personally meeting with accused persons trying to decipher whether or not they had a shrapnel or a, 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 a fragment uh, uh, injuries or damages defects from 2014 it's not something that you can do well we do that a lot we have cases where a person has been shot and he sustained a gunshot wound and they ask us, can we determine if that was a gunshot wound or was the height maybe, so that we can place the person on a crime scene. We do that in one regular basis if the I.O. requests us to do that. And the other aspect, and then I'm not going to belabor that as well, it was touched on to some length by Mr. Gomezu, is this one. You are a senior ballistic expert at FSL, and yet the I.O. sends you to say, go and fetch a particular suspect firearm from me at Cleveland. Whereas we've been told here in court by Mohani Mohola that whenever the captain wanted delegation, he'll delegate them. Why would Kininda send a senior officer of your caliber to a police station to go and pick up a firearm? My Lord, 
Brigadier Dinguini that did not send me to, file, to go and collect the files. Yes. What did he do? I initiated it only because I saw what I was looking at, that I need the firearm to shoot the additional test. I called him, I said, I, can I get that firearm? He said, no, the firearm was booked back at the CPT. He said, no, I'll go look for it because I know what type of a firearm is. I know where to look for it. The firearm, at first, it did not have the serial number. So if I go to the station to look for it, I know where to look for it, confirm that this is the right firearm. That's why I decided to go and fetch it. Cleveland, <laughs> If the firearm was with the owner, I said it yesterday, if the firearm was with the owner or was with the company, I wouldn't even go and fetch it. I would tell him that I would request that firearm to shoot additional tests. So it was for him to go and fetch it if it was with the firearm, with the, the, the owner or the company. But because it's in police custody, mm -hmm. I can sign for it out of the 13, shoot the test and then take it back. Now, like I said, I'm not going to believe at that point. Uh, I was just passing this uh, point that you personally attend to a police station to pick up an exhibit, but let's not belabor that. Your further evidence is that now Captain Gininda also gave you a case number 962 of 2015, uh, and with that you went onto your system and then you found that it had a lab number related to it. Is that correct? That's correct. And the lab number that was attached to that case, if I'm correct, is LAB 34369 of 15. Is that correct? That is correct, my lord. And your further testimony is that the set lab number 34369 of 2015 was received by warrant officer Rulofse, who examined the exhibit firearm, exhibit four in this case, right? That's correct, Malo. And Rulofse conduct conducted the examination, which are the test fires, right, which is 369 TC1 and 2 and 369 TB1 and 2. That's correct, my lord. Uh, 1, 3, 1, TC1 and 2, 3, TCR? 369. 369. TB2, no TB1, yes. And just for clarification, for those that are confused by the TB and TC. The TC stands for test cartridge one and test cartridge two, right? That's correct, my lord. When we shoot a test for comparison or yes. what we'll do is on your cartridge case, the cartridge cases you mark them with the last three digits of the lab number. Yes. And then TC one is test cartridge one or test cartridge two. And on the bullet it will be the last three digits of the lab number and then it's TB one or TB two. And your testimony is that you then examined one firearm, which is the exhibit firearm, and the test bullets 
and cartridges by a rule of say and compare them whether they imparted markings, right? You compared rule of says tests, by now you have received the firearm in this case. So you compared those to the exhibit firearm, rule of says uh, examination. I compared the test? The test fires of rule of say. Yes. To de de determine whether or not they were fired from the same firearm. Real of test? Yes. Yes, I did that. And I went to the Upegage logo, I'm a test to get in Zoe and Nagi, or the Rose Upegage, Ubutige, Atu, Kuranama, Apuma Yinibuska, Gusfam, a sort. And then, if I understood you well, you said that upon examination, you determined that the class characteristics were discernible, but the uh, individual striations were not that discernible. <coughs> because of the nature of the bullets that were used in rule of says test fires. That is rule of say fired FMJs, correct? That's correct. Then you then yourself commenced with your own examination now of the test firearms I mean, that, sorry, sorry, the test fire, uh, the exhibit firearm, and then you conduct, firstly, a testing with FMJs so that you can see whether the replication and uh, reproducibility of the marks on FMJs fired by rule officer were there. Did can you fire FMJ bullets yourself? Yes, I did fire test? the FMJ bullet. Okay. And if I understood your evidence further, is that because FMJs are a hardcore bullet, you decided to fire bullets similar to, similar to those that were fired at the scene, i.e. CMJs, correct? That's correct, my lord. Now, how many FMJs did you fire, test fire yourself? From to compare During all your to testing? Well, I fired eight rounds, yes. eight, eight tests. Yes. And of eight tests, I think two tests were the FMJ, and then the other six were the CMJs. I'm testing our Zage about eight. I'm a big one, I gave up on my test the FMJ, our six figure, our CMJ. And now I'm talking about the rule of uh, FMJs that you fired. And correct me if I'm wrong as well. The class characteristics on the FMJs are discernible on the bullet. Uh, forget about casings because. We're not talking about casings in this case. The, 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 the discernible class characteristics are there, correct? That's correct. And did you observe some of the also similar striations on, on the FMJs, the rule of say ones. That's correct, my lord. Now having seen the similar or discernible class characteristics and some individual characteristics, what were your findings? My findings were that, my lord, I am convinced it's the same firearm that Rulof has tested. Okay. Now let's come to your actual tests now. We've, we, we've done Rulof says FMJs, the two, your two FMJs. Let's come to the six CMJs. Right? Now you you label your test TC1369, TC3 to 
369TC10, correct? That's correct. Numbers TC1. It's, uh, three, uh, in fact, let's use TC1 and TC3 to t TC10 because if we continue to say 3691, it traps the language. So TC3 to TC10. Okay. Re sorry, are they referred to like that? In, it's so sorry, my lord. In your evidence, in your affidavit. In my affidavit, my lot is 369 TC3 to 369 TC10. Okay. But is the court comfortable that we cut off the 369 because it's, it treats the tongue or should we, for record purposes, put the 369 as well? No, no, fine. As long as he agrees that it's okay. the same. Okay. And then your bullets are marked 369 T, uh, TB3 to TB10, correct? That's correct. And you said those CMJs uh, that you find the six ones are of different manufacture or are marketed for different companies. You mentioned one of the companies as PNP. What were the other companies that you testified the CMJs for? The CMJ is not PNP. It was. NGA, and the others were from Seller and Bellot. Okay. Seller and Bellot and NGA. Okay. NGA, you know, it's a little bit of a CMJ. Uh, CMJ, I'm sure, it's a little bit of a PMP. So let me clear it, because I, I, I misunderstand this. So if I misspeak, you must correct me. So the PMPs are a FMJ. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
because of wear and tear of the tools that they're using, will create another max which will be unique to a specific one, but not to the same one. My Lord, I see it's 103. Is that wow. an approach? 103. Yes, my Lord. What time do you come back? Uh, at 2 o'clock, my Lord. Okay. Mr. Ramsipid, I heard you say you don't know what FMC meant. FMJ, full metal jacket. Mm.